Yo, hey guys, what's up? It's your boy. What's good? Um, I've been away for the last couple of days, uh, handling some stuff, kind of taking a break from uh, certain things and topics. Kind of took a little mini vacay um, for the last three days. Anyway, in doing so, a lot of stuff has been happening in the wrestling world um, in the last three days of my absence from AEW, um, well, before that, um, NXT, having a solid show since they moved to Tuesday on the first episode. Um, AEW getting their second highest rated show since uh, their debut a year and a year and a half ago, and WWE doing another uh, mass release of talent. Um, just I think went Thursday, Thursday I think it was, uh, which kind of shocked everyone. So I'm going to talk about all these things. Well, the first two topics that I meant, the first two things I mentioned earlier, I'm going to mention and talk about in detail in a different video. The main purpose of this video I'm going to talk about is the WWE uh, releases. Um, it kind of shocked everyone. Uh, so just let me pull it up here. Um, I have to say this here. The wrestlers that... Or how should I say this? It's no surprise to anyone that... Or it shouldn't come as a surprise that WWE did a cut release... Um, WWE, it's always been notorious for years that post WrestleMania is always cut season. Um, they always cut people and release people. Uh, now I know for the last, like maybe five years now, with the exception of last year, which they did like a mass firing of people, um, due to, you know, the unfortunate circumstances that we were in and still are in during the global pandemic before that. WWE hadn't cut anybody, like, post-WrestleMania in, like, four or five years. Because if you look at, like, you know, their money that they made from the, the Saudi deal, which wasn't, that deal wasn't too old. Um, the money they got from Fox uh, for SmackDown, to put SmackDown on Fox. WWE was making, and still are, making more money hand over fist. And they were just signing up people and locking people down. And, you know, guys were just basically getting guaranteed money. Um, so... For the last, like, four or five years, we didn't get any massive layoffs from WWE. So when we finally did get one last year, like I said, once again, due to the climate, which made it even worse, we were being in a global pandemic and things were just, it was just such uncertain territory that we were in. We didn't know what was going on, didn't understand uh, the, the, the level and the, of the, the capacity of this, this pandemic, um, that it really didn't look good for WWE at all and still is looked pretty badly. Um, for them doing that mass firing last year in 2020. Fast forward, <laughs> once again, WWE kind of gets another black eye for this, and deservingly so, a year, one day, I'm sorry, a year later from the day, which I think was, when it was either Wednesday or Thursday of this past week, they did another firing about of some, I think maybe 20 people, I think, or maybe a little bit less than 20, but literally, like, on the same day. Um, I will say this. The people that they dropped this year, I'm going to be honest, outside of two or three talents that I'm going to mention in detail, they were kind of trimming the fat. Um, I learned that it was John Leonidas, old Johnny Ace, if you guys remember him. He was the one that made the calls to these talents and... Um, cut them and apparently he made a statement the statement was that it was due to budget constraints as to the reason why they released and cut some of these talents i thought triple h was part of talent relations i had heard that johnny ace was coming back um to some capacity like about a little bit a year ago it was kind of quietly mentioned through the, the wrestling news i don't think a lot of people paid attention to it because it really wasn't like big news where it's like everywhere but I did remember saying something in some articles or some rumblings of Johnny Ace coming back somewhat into his old former role. Um, so to hear him cut this talent, not surprising. Or to say that he was the one that put the axe uh, to the talent here, not surprising. Uh, but I'm just going to go down the list here of some of the talent that, that they released. Um, Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas, I really don't know what to say. Bo Dallas to me never caught on. Uh, going back from NXT, he just never caught on for me. Um, his his thing when he got up to the main roster, 
he was dead upon arrival. The whole believe thing, it was kind of funny, but it really didn't stick. Um, Bo Dallas, I'm surprised, has been there for so long. I don't know what the hell he has done. I mean, dude hasn't even been used as like an enhancement talent or a jobber. Definitely there was an opportunity to miss at some point because I definitely think he could have done something with his brother Bray. Uh, so the fact that they've never even tried to do anything with Bo, having him involved, having some involvement with his brother, um, I think is a is a loss um, in in that regard. Uh, others would be Chelsea Green, who is the wife of Zack Ryder. It's not too surprising. Uh, Tucker, Tucker from Heavy Machinery, a little bit shocked about that one. Like why? Like we knew he wasn't gonna like, we knew he was gonna flounder on his own in comparison to Otis, but they never should have split up Heavy Machinery in the beginning. Those two guys worked really well together. They never should have been, been split up. I, I don't understand the, the point of that. Now, uh, Kalisto. Kalisto is another really good talent, a guy who has worked had some works in Japan. I think Kalisto maybe has some work in Ring of Honor too. Correct me if I'm wrong. But point is, um, he's another guy, kind of floundered. I think Kalisto would do better. In the independent scene, go back to Japan, go back to Mexico, go back to maybe even Ring of Honor. I think he may have had a stint in Ring of Honor or maybe even MLW. I think Kalisto would do well because Kalisto is a good talent. Um, I just think he just got overlooked um, and wasn't really given a fair shake. Then we have um, now in terms of the, the most of the talent that got cut today or a couple of days ago, the big talents to me are Samoa Joe and uh, Peyton Royce. And oh god, I forget her name. Uh, bu- 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 Billy K. Mickey James also got released as well. Again, not too surprising because WWE tends to let go of veterans and kind of bring them back. So Mickey James wasn't too much of a surprise. Um, but Billy K. was another one as well. Uh, Billy K. and Peyton Royce of the Iconics, another perfect example of Tucker's situation with 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 heavy machinery. Iconics, I don't think, they weren't technically in ring. They weren't really good. But in terms of personality and character, I thought they had it. Iconics, to me, I thought were, they were funny. They were like that annoying kind of heelish, you know. To me, I figured they were they were a better heel version of, if you guys remember the diva Britney, the, the singing diva who will always sing out of tune and whatnot back in the mid-2000s. Um... To me, they were kind of like a much more tolerable, but like better version of her in the regards of, you know, just them being, you know, the whole, you know, annoying heels and, you know, them shouting iconic. Um, they had some personality there. And then the whole thing of them splitting because Vince sees something more in Peyton Royce as a solo star. Billy Kay was kind of doing her own thing and like auditioning and wanted to work with different talents behind the scenes, you know, and SmackDown and Raw, whatever, getting herself over. Peyton Royce really didn't get much of a fair shake at getting a solo run. I'm really surprised that they got rid of these those those two girls. Um, they never should have split up in the first place, and I think they had something with them because they were a natural tag team for the women's division. But WWE just has this need to split them up. Now the biggest talent that got cut from this, which shocked everybody, it shocked me. Like I mentioned, like it it was like the the the, the head bulletin on the article when I first heard this news and my brother-in-law overheard me he was like wait what they got rid of who Samoa Joe they got rid of Samoa Joe Samoa Joe was part of this uh this mass firing and I'm shocked I am absolutely shocked um I mean Samoa Joe to me is hands down besides him and he besides AJ Styles top two favorite like TNA original guys. Um, Samoa Joe, I think, was a missed opportunity just for the simple fact that Samoa Joe is very talented in other uh, other avenues uh, besides, besides wrestling. The guy can talk his ass off on the mic. To me, I think he's one of the best mic workers um, in the business still today. Um, you could argue and say Joe was prone to a lot of injury and whatnot, which kind of caused him to WWE kind of not really push him that much or push him that far and then just kind of reposition him in the commentary booth. And I thought it was fine in the commentary booth. I thought he was befitting in the commentary booth. And I think he, he, he got comfortable 
And I thought he was doing well on Raw as, as commentary, but to see that they got rid of him, um, I mean, they couldn't find him to be a talent scout. They couldn't keep him on commentary, but like maybe put him to NXT because Beth Phoenix is trash on commentary in NXT. But like put him on commentary in NXT, put him on SmackDown. Another guy, Pat McAfee, they just signed. That's really where all the budgets came from. Cutting all these 10 talents, they used that to sign Pat McAfee's check, which I think he's a good acquisition because we'll get to that in a different uh, conversation because I do think he does have some value in WWE, hence what he's, the work he's done in, in, in NXT. Um, so they can get some value out of McAfee. But um, they could have found something for Joe. Joe could have been a manager to another wrestler, something. But to just cut him off dry like that, I think that that was definitely a missed opportunity. Now, it came out yesterday that Samoa Joe, um, or reports are coming out that Samoa Joe had actually had been wanting to wrestle and want to get back in the ring, but he was denied because WWE doctors have not cleared him. So, kind of makes you think, where does Joe go from here? I say the sky's the limits for Joe. Here's why. Because if Joe wanted to wrestle, and Joe hasn't wrestled since, like, I think someone counted 2019 or something like that when he was doing a, uh, he was filming the commercial for the WWE 2K game in 2019. He got injured, and we hadn't, Joe hasn't, like, got stepped foot back in the ring since. Um, so it's been a year and some change. I would like to think whatever nagging injuries he's had, Joe has probably healed up. He's got a 90 day 30 clause, 90 day clause, non compete clause, excuse me. So we'll probably see Joe sometime in maybe like in the summer, July, August, where he can be free up and, you know, wrestle wherever he, he pleases. But here's why Joe, I still think, can bring some value to wherever he goes. I, he may have some, some, like I said, some nagging injuries or whatnot, but Joe wanted to wrestle. WWE's doctors didn't clear him to wrestle. I don't think, I think Joe still has some gas in the tank. Because if you look at a lot of wrestlers who have defied the odds of, you know, you can't wrestle again, you're never able to wrestle again. You look at guys like Daniel Bryan, who hadn't stepped foot in the ring in like, you know, seven or eight years or whatever, maybe seven years, due to his concussion. But Daniel Bryan's back. You look at, um, most recently, Edge, who had been gone from the company for well over a decade, because, or not well over, but just about a decade uh, due to, you know, neck injury and whatnot, and Edge is back to some capacity. Then you look at most recently uh, Christian, who, you know, seven years out of action due to a concussion, multiple concussions, is back to some capacity wrestling. So it is possible, it is very still possible for Samoa Joe to get back in that ring and get some work. He's 42 years old, he's not in his prime years, but he still has some mileage you know, as long as as long as his, physically his body can hold up, he still has some mileage left. I feel we don't know. Um, I'm just speculating, but I'm just saying, just from an age perspective, at 42 years old, again, his prime is behind him, but he still got some some mileage left ahead of him. Um, in comparison to say, like you know, a Christian or uh, Edge, who are both on the cusp of 50, or Sting, who's a 63, 64 year old man. I think Joe, Joe, Joe can still go. Um, no pun intended there. I think Joe can still go. It's only a matter of time. Like I said, physically, he can get cleared and maybe he has to change some things up a bit in his wrestling style. But I think Joe can definitely still be a key value member wherever he goes. Now, that leads to the second part of the question. Where does Samoa Joe go? I know I've been very, I've been a strong advocate of AEW not signing any more people. AEW does not need to sign any more people. But this is the one key talent. And I keep saying, like, this is, this is why AEW needs to stop signing, like, so many people. Because in a case like this, this is like, hey, immediate snag them, go. Joe would be great in AEW. I think he would be a good get for AEW. He's got some experience on commentary booth anyway. So, you know, whatever capacity they choose would choose to use him as an in-ring competitor. Whenever AEW launches their second show um, on, on TNT or on a TNT network, they could use him with Joe as a guy in the booth because Joe, I think, is, is, is good. Um, in, in commentary, I've grown to enjoy him over his, his stint on Raw on the booth. Um, so, you know, there's a key asset there. Um, New Japan, 
New Japan wouldn't be bad either. I would like to see Joe, Joe could even get a run in New Japan as well. Kind of tear it up there a little bit. Get a little run. And then maybe from like New Japan, he could cross over to AEW. Something like that. Um, MLW wouldn't be wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad stint to, to get in. Um, Ring of Honor, him coming back to his original home, which is Ring of Honor, not TNA, but his, his original home, T, uh, uh, Ring of Honor. That wouldn't be a bad option. Impact Wrestling, I'm mm, he'd be a good get for Impact's roster, no doubt. But I don't think Joe coming back, I don't think his his value would be um, at its best, I should say, if he was to go back to Impact Wrestling. Um so definitely, I definitely think AEW is the first ballot place. If not AEW, New Japan, or go to New Japan first, then make your way to AEW, something along those lines. But definitely those would be the top two uh, companies. I would definitely like to see Joe go and, and someone from either two snag him. Definitely, probably AEW, because he's, he's friends with guys like Frankie Kazarian, um, Christopher Daniels. He knows the, the, the young bucks, young bucks. Um, he and Christian have history. Um, there's a lot of guys, Samoa Joe knows, in that AEW locker room um, that I think that will probably be the first ballot place I will see Joe go. And if Joe goes there, I wouldn't mind at all. And for anyone that would say, hey, you, they're taking WWE's leftovers, let's be real. Joe was a TNA guy. Like, Regardless of what success he was able to, you know, and he's made, he's had some, I think he had a good run. For his short run in WWE, I think he had a good run. His NXT run, I, I liked it. Joe even said himself, he wasn't even supposed to make it beyond NXT. When he first came into WWE, he was just going to be made for NXT. And, like, that was pretty much it. And once he did his thing in NXT, then, like, that was it. But, obviously, he impressed enough people to get called to the main roster. He had a good feud uh, with, with Roman Reigns. I enjoyed his feud with Brock Lesnar, even though it was quick and it was a quick stint i thought it was a great build um i've enjoyed his feud with jeff hardy i enjoyed his uh united states championship run joe had a J joe's joe's run in wwe looking back at it, even though it was short from nxt to the main roster it wasn't a bad run it was it was short and sweet just because of you know his 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 injuries and whatnot but um i, I think we're just kind of starting to pile up on him uh, from, you know, prior to, you know, WWE and then working that WWE schedule, I just think it was kind of becoming a little bit too much on Joe's body physically. That's why I'm a little bit like, if he goes to AEW, whatever limitations he may have physically or whatnot, it probably won't be as harsh for him because AEW schedule is a little bit lighter uh, in comparison to WWE. Plus, AEW right now are kind of stationed in, in one place. Uh, so are WWE, though, with, with the Thunderdome due to the pandemic. But you get what I mean. The AEW schedule is going to be a little bit lighter, um, I feel, for, for Joe um, in comparison to, to WWE. So um, going back, like I said, Joe was a TNA guy, a Ring of Honor guy who lucked out and found some mediocre success, but success nonetheless in WWE. So for anyone that would say, well, here's AEW getting another WWE guy, he wasn't a WWE guy. Joe's a TNA guy. You guys let me know what you think about this. Do you agree, disagree with my opinions on about some of Joe? What are your thoughts on these release uh these releases? Um or any of your thoughts in the box below. Do yourself a favor, hit that button. Like, subscribe, peace.